Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge and this is your latest Manchester United news. As United players reportedly slam Rasmus Hoyland for his interview with the United Stands. What's that all about? Well, look, it's Sunday and uh, all day there's been this Goldbridge trending, United Stand trending, cancel the United Stands and all this stuff. And... Look, I'm not going to let social media and a pile-on run the story here. Um, there's a few false truths and we're going to hit them with facts. Um, what this is, is it's an opportunist pile-on to try and distract. This is a distraction technique and it's probably coming from these players. And the bottom line for me is I don't understand the world we live in anymore. Even if a couple of United players weren't happy with Rasmus for doing an interview with the United Stand, why do you think they weren't happy about it? because they've been criticised for not being very good. So United fans hear that and decide to side with the players that aren't good enough against fans who call them out for not being good enough. Welcome to the world. So basically you are going to side with multi-millionaire players who aren't good enough for United to try and cancel a, a load of other United fans. I don't even get that. I don't even get that. But look, let's get into it because it's not even true. It's not even true. It's not even true. So let's start off with the supposed story. I can't believe we're even doing a show about this tonight, but welcome to the world of, um, you know, social media, cancel culture, whatever you want to call it. But look, this resided in the United We Stand fanzine. Fantastic fanzine. Get your fanzines. They've been around for years. No issues with them at all. Uh, and apparently this was on some... Let me just read this correctly, what I was told. This would be from Gutter Snipe, which is a gossip column called Gutter Snipe in the United We Stand fanzine. So, you know, who knows behind it? A lot of people are trying to run some Andy Mitten versus Mark Goldbridge thing. Don't know what that's all about, but we'll get onto that in a moment because apparently that's that's a thing. Don't know what that's all about. I follow Andy Mitten, have done for ages. Thought his interview with Ten Hag the other month was really good. Um, you know, follows Man United, has done for years, no issue with him at all. Don't know what that's all about. But again, social media trying to run their own story that's not actually true. But look, let me read what actually this is all about. So a couple, this is from this magazine, a couple of Man United players asked Rasmus Hoyland regarding his decision to give an interview to the United stand, which was built, why, and why he did it when it was built on negativity and slaughtering United players. And apparently Rasmus said he didn't realise and was apologetic. Um, absolute bollocks. I mean, just absolute nonsense. I knew when we did that interview with Rasmus, and I'm going to tell you how it came about and how we got to that point. And I'm going to tell you my theory on who these players are. But what happened, I knew, I knew that interview would cause problems. And it did. The mainstream media, I'm talking about the journalists in the press conference and stuff who write for other news outlets, absolutely burnt them. They hated it. Absolutely hated it. Why are they getting an interview? We're the established media. Blah, blah, blah. I knew that was going to happen. I knew there was going to be a kickback from certain sections of the fan base who don't like the United Stand and don't even watch it. I knew that was going to be the case. And I knew it was a big decision by the player and the club to do it. Uh, and I knew it was going to very, be very hard for it to happen. And I don't care if the football club ban United Stand from press conferences. I don't care if we never get an interview again. It, it doesn't matter. When we started this, it was a community to build and it's built. It's a community. If the community say shut the United Stand down and stop doing it, we'll stop it. It's, it's not. It, this, it doesn't matter. It's been a good run. Let's shut it down and let's all forget it ever existed. I don't mind. But the reason I wanted to push for that interview, because I knew there'd be a pile on, was because I knew it was something really innovative. And I wanted it to open the door to others to do it. Because I was like, I said to the club, if you do this interview with us and allow Rasmus to do it, you will benefit from it. And you will get you will benefit from it because you will get a much bigger audience than you can get on MUTV. Uh, you'll get a much bigger audience than all of the newspapers combined. You'll get a as big bigger audience than probably Sky would get. You will get millions. And actually, there's no other fan channel who can do that either. There's no other fanzine. There's nobody. Um, and that's probably what got the club interested. So when they say in this article that a couple of players weren't happy about it, absolutely. 
I, I agree. I 100% agree. I, I know there's players that don't like the United stand. There's a lot of players who do. Guess what? There's a lot of players that don't like each other in the dressing room either. So I don't care that they don't like the United stand. That's up to them. What does the United stand do? Slaughter and cause problems for the football club? Mm. Looking at the last 10 years, I've not picked a team in 10 years. It's not my fault we got slapped up by Liverpool last season. Last time I checked, I don't run the team. I don't do the tactics. So it's not on the United stand. These are players who probably have people surrounding them, telling them that it's everybody else's fault that they're not good enough. So it's not on you. It's not on me. So if they don't like the United stand or the Manchester Evening News or anybody else because they, they, sl they slate them, that's not on me. That's not on you. That's on them. And I guarantee there are two, three United players that don't like the United stand. And maybe, maybe the United, we sta uh, the, the United We Stand mag are right. Maybe they've got a really good source. Maybe it's the player itself saying, I was fuming that Rasmus did that interview and I told him about it. But where it becomes false is Rasmus didn't reply and went, oh, I'm really sorry, I didn't realise. Because if you watch the interview, he's talking about my career mode. I don't, I haven't done my career mode really properly for two or three years. Not properly. Well, no, probably about a year, to be honest with you. The bottom line is, look, Rasmus, before he was at United, is what all I'm going to say, knew about who I was and the United stand. So when it says that two United players have had a problem with Rasmus for doing the interview and makes out that he didn't, he, oh, I'm really sorry, I didn't realise, never happened. Didn't happen. And I'll tell you why it didn't happen. One, because he knew about the United stand way before this. Two, we've been in press conferences for years. And if these players didn't like it, why haven't they said something about that? And three, and the most important thing here is, this interview was hand in hand with the club. This interview was hand in hand with the player. This interview was aware of by everybody in Man United from top to bottom. And it took months for it to happen. So if these players didn't want it to happen, they could have stopped it at any point. At the start of every week, United have some sort of bulletin board where you can look at what everybody's doing. So you know Rashford's doing an interview with BT or something like that. Everybody knows that. So if they wanted to stop it, they could have stopped it. And what I what I call jealousy and what I call, you know, bullshit is the is 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 the story that's gone out there that this interview was done on the quiet. And then the players found out about it, told Rasmus off. And then Rasmus was like, oh, I'm really sorry I did it. That's not what happened. And also, in some ways, I wish it did. Because would that not show the problems in the dressing room that a player does an interview with an outlet that, you know, spread on a load of positivity, which I'll talk about in a moment. And then senior players in the dressing room come up to him and say, don't do that again. Why should Rasmus Menu Ganacho be listening to those players who failed at this football club for a long time. And is that not what we talk about all the time? Why has Bruno gone from being a really good player to being down there? Why does every player that comes into United start off here and go down there? Because the impact of the dressing room. It'd be very dangerous for players to be telling players what they can and can't do. And it would be very weak of the new players to say, all right, I won't do it, I'm really sorry. I mean, would you go into the dressing room as Rasmus or Ganacho? and be told by, you know, whatever senior player you want, you're not doing that. I'd go, hold on a minute. You might not be up to date with the current world, but you haven't got a clue what you're talking about and you're not telling me what to do. Look after your own career. But no, let's pile on to that. So look, what happened on the day was that we went to Carrington early in the morning and we were there for hours, visibly there for hours. There was a press conference going on. I saw journalists. There was a training session going on. I saw other players. I walked straight past Johnny Evans. You know, he was actually right next to us. They saw loads of people. So it wasn't a secret that we were there. Sometimes you get interviews with like JD Sports and stuff and the club can't really get involved. You know, um, I think Angry Ginger's got one soon with Rasmus coming out where the club's not involved. That's a sponsor. That's, you know, the club can't really do anything about that. This was at Manchester United Football Training Ground. Managers there, people, everybody's there. Everybody knew it was happening. Um, when we did the interview, it had been planned for weeks. Everybody knew it was going to happen. When we did the interview, everybody knew we were there. When we did the interview, all the questions had been checked. 
Couldn't get anything in about, you know, do you think this player's shit? That's never going to happen. When we did the interview and it was recorded and edited, they got to look at it again. There's about, there's, I can't even count the amount of times this could have been stopped by somebody who didn't want it to happen. So the risks, if you want to call them the risks, were there. Everybody knows what the United stand is. The players, Rasmus, the club, everybody knew. So this story that, oh, he did the interview on the quiet and then everybody found out about it. I mean, I, it's just not true. I'll talk about the players not being happy about it because that's true. But I'm not going to have this rewritten that United stand have somehow kidnapped Rasmus to do an interview and he didn't realise he shouldn't have done it. Like, it, it, it was planned for a long time. We were there. And I've got to say as well, what was a really positive thing, and I think it was a really positive thing, has now been spun into a real negative. And I think that's a real shame because I don't think the club has been very forward thinking over the time I've been doing this. I can tell you now that that interview across all the platforms that we put it out on, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, whatever, over 6 million views, 6 million views. Most newspaper outlets won't get that in a month on Man United. Um, no other fan channel is going to get that in, in, in the world. Like, it was massively viewed. Every question we did, I and Beth and a couple of other people spent our time on. We wanted it not to be like journalist questions, but we knew we couldn't get the sort of answers that we probably wanted about why things are going wrong. So we, we, we wanted to make it really unique. All I wanted to do was create something that was massively successful, innovative, and the club were on board with that. And so was the player and so was everybody else. It was just, it was an experiment and it worked. And it may not ha never happen again, but it was massive because the big, big thing was that the club can't do that. They can't reach that many people in that way because we are a real fan community. And when you do that, they hit into something that they've not been very good at doing. And I think it was a real positive thing to do. And the overarching thing for me is I knew there was going to be a kickback. I knew we'd get stuff like this and I knew people would have a problem with it. But I was like, we either don't do it or we do it. And the big thing for me was, well, it was for you. So many people were like, I'd love to see this over the years. I'd love to see you sit down with a player. And I was just like, well, this is just for the community. This is this is for the United Stand community and anybody else that wants to watch it. And I just thought, well, it's just it's just a positive thing. Um, like Constrictive Game says, will you do future interviews? Probably not. Probably won't happen again because it's just, you know, I sort of knew that when we did it, it probably won't happen again. Um, I've reached out to a couple of players about doing it. You'd be surprised who they were. Um, you know, not interested. There's some people that have been interested in doing it, but... Look, I think it was a real positive. And the funny thing is about the pylon from the opportunist other aggregators is that they're almost eating their own arse, aren't they? You know, they see it as an opportunity to try and stick the knife in on the United stand. And yet they're growing in the same environments. So what are you going to do? You know, if you cancel all this fan community stuff of which you are, do you think Sky or the Manchester Evening News are going to welcome you in? Never. I find it funny that there's people who are... Look, there's other there's, there's fans that are going to pile on. I get that. That's fine. But the other aggregators, I'm sort of like, are you not in the same space as us? Like, it's really, really weird. Um, so, look, the truth is that the story is not right. Um, the fact that it's sort of been put out there that United players weren't happy about it. They've gone to Rasmus and he's apologised and said, I didn't realise. He knows exactly what the United stand is. The club knew exactly who the United stand are. The players knew exactly what was happening with the interview. And the interview didn't slag any players off. It was actually very professional. So, look, what I will admit is, I would imagine a couple of players weren't happy about it. But I would imagine a lot of players weren't happy when Marcus Rashford was out partying in Belfast. I would imagine there's been a lot of players that weren't happy with the story that came out about Anthony. I would be imagining that a lot of players weren't happy with Jadon Sancho. You know... The players aren't at Carrington going ring a ring of roses. Like, some of the players don't even like each other. So, of course, of course, I guarantee there probably was one or two United players that didn't like the interview. But this pretense that they didn't like the interview because this community here that we have is built on um, um, negativity and slaughtering United players. 
I mean, maybe two or three years ago, but uh, have we not been arguing for the last few weeks about Rashford? I defended him and said the Belfast thing wasn't that bad. You panned me for it. Have we not had arguments about protecting the manager and some of you want to sack the manager? Do some of you not want to sell Bruno and I don't? Do some of you not want to sell Luke Shaw and I don't? I mean, what's this negativity and slaughtering players about? They don't watch it. They don't watch it. What they hear is little clips saying Rashford wasn't good today, five. McTominay wasn't good today, five. You know, Maguire shouldn't be playing for Man United, five. Like, they see the little clips on Twitter. You know, Bruno was below par today, five. They see the little... I'm not saying it's those players, by the way. You probably think it is. But they see those clips, but they don't watch the shows. They don't, they don't watch the shows where we're saying McTominay is not going to get sold this summer. Rashford's not going to get sold. They don't watch the shows where I go, you know, Rashford, I agree with the fact that he only got a one game ban. They're not watching the shows, but they probably don't like it, but they're not watching the shows. So I, I don't really care. I'm not really bothered if, if, if some players have a negative opinion of it. But this nonsense that they're running the dressing room and telling people what they can and can't do. Um, it's incredible because they were fully aware of the interview and they were fully aware of the interview for a long time before it. Um, and I thought it was, you know, I actually thought it was quite intimate, innovative. Look, also what I would say about these players is jealous. I said it on Twitter, jealous. I think they're jealous. I think, I think they're very jealous. I mean, is it not human behaviour? You see Rasmus playing well, doing an interview that loads of you enjoy and then you're not getting that love Players are very egotistical. Maybe they're just jealous about it. Why are you doing that interview with them? They're so negative. They don't watch the channel to know it's negative. They're just jealous of the fact that that's gone and had 6 million views worldwide. You know, there could be many reasons before behind it. Maybe they don't like the fact that Rasmus, Ganacho and Maynou are becoming the new stars of the team and they're not. I don't know. There could be many reasons behind it. Um, maybe the story's fabricated. I don't know. But look, I'll take the story for what it is. I don't really think, I don't think it's inaccurate in the fact that a couple of players might not have been happy about it. But what I will take issue with is that Rasmus apologised for it and said he didn't know. Like, it was, it was, it was, it was done through the club. That He knows exactly what the United stand is, as does everybody in that dressing room. There are other players who know what the United stand is. Um, I'm not here to brag or, 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 or anything like that, but like, I, I know other people who, look... <laughs> I know somebody else who's a lot smaller than the United stand who's potentially got an interview coming up with a midfielder for Man United that will be very interesting. I know that for a fact. So let's not pretend that there's something sinister going on here and the United stand kidnapped Rasmus Hoyland for an interview. I thought it was a really positive piece. I thought it was a really good interview and I thought it was really innovative of the club. And I don't normally applaud the club for anything, but they, I thought it was really innovative and... They wouldn't have done it if they thought they were going to get something out of it. Like, if you go and knock on the door and say, can I have an interview with Rasmus Hoyland? The club will probably go, all you're doing is getting from that. We're just going to blow you up. I said to them, you will get more out of this than we will. Obviously, we get to interview a player, but we will showcase the, the reach that we have. And it went into six million. The club, Man United can't do that with MUTV. So they got something out of it. It was an experiment. It probably won't happen again, but it was a really innovative exper experiment. And I hoped that it would open the door for others to do this sort of thing as well. But there seems to be a reluctance in the fan base, for in certain parts of the fan base, where if you're a fan community who actually support the club and you build something like this and you create these opportunities, it's a real problem. But The Sun, the Manchester Evening News, the Daily Mail... All these journalists who probably don't even support Man United and all these news outlets that don't support Man United, oh, they can write what they like. They can write what they like. They can go in the press conference. They can do all these interviews. But if you're a United fan creating something that's about opinion, oh, no, you can't do that. You absolutely can't do that. Um, it's weird. It's really weird. And at its core principle as well, its core principle as well, let's not forget, the truth of this story, if you believe what was written in that fanzine, is that a couple of players went up to Rasmus and expressed their unhappiness at him doing an interview with a, the biggest Man United fan community in the world. Some of our fan base took that as a reason to champion those players and try and shut this community down. And yet the people who are doing that, I guarantee you can check their Twitter feed and then they'll be a slagging players off themselves. Make that make sense.
is that not just a pile on to try and cancel people or do they make no sense? So you are backing two players who are telling a player not to do something with a community that serves many, many United fans all around the world in a really professional interview. You're backing the players for telling him not to do that. What in that interview was negative or slagging players off? Nothing. Who are these players? Are they underperforming players that shouldn't be at the club? And you're backing them. Weird. It's a, it's a weird take when you think of it like that, aren't they? Um, who are the players? I can, I can guess who the players are. Um, I can guess who the players are. That would be unprofessional. Um, I would go asking the, pe the person who wrote that article who the players are. They know. I've spoke. I can speak to you from our side of what happened. I can tell. Well, the interview was with Rasmus. The club knew about it. Every player in that football club knew about it. I'd go back to them and say, "Tell us who the players are," because ultimately, don't want to brag, but every side of our story is evidential. The player, the club, us, our side of the story is completely evidenced. If people want to believe the other side of the story, tell us who the players are then, because I can guess who it is. Easily can guess who it is. But I don't know who those players are. I've not. I've not. I've not been given that information. They didn't even name the United. They didn't even name the player, or the United. They didn't even blame. They did, they just said a YouTube channel. They didn't even name, name even name us. Um, what I do want to say is though, I do need to say this because it's very important, and I would like to have got it out a little bit earlier. Uh, Twitter's been kicking off today about this, which is. Somewhat confusing when you listen to what I've just spoken to about for the last 20 minutes. It's, it's very, very confusing because ultimately what you've got is a pile on because two unnamed players told one of our best performing players not to do an interview because they weren't comfortable with it. Well, who are these players? Why are they telling a player what they can and can't do? And these players are probably players that people would like to sell, if we're being completely honest. Um, jealous players. You know, underperforming players. I don't know. But what I did see today, and maybe more for me for replying to it, is that you may have heard of someone called uh, Kieran Maguire, who is a an FFP um, expert. Never spoken to him in my life. Don't know anything about him. Will have referenced him on many sh news shows about his expertise in financial fair play. I saw this this afternoon. I'm not a Man United fan, but Andy Mitten is the real deal. A proper red who knows the history and culture of the club. And a nice guy too. Mark Goldbridge is an amateurish embarrassment who taps into the shrieking hordes element that exists in any fan base and does it just for clicks. No idea what that context is. Never had any impact uh, interaction with Kieran Maguire at all. And 100% has the right to put his in opinion about cucumbers, what he does with cucumbers, Mark Goldbridge, anything. He can put what he likes on Twitter. I can't moan about that. But I do have the right to reply. Do not know what you're talking about, Kieran. Do not know why I'm being pitted up against Andy Mitten. And um, as for, you know, calling me a shrieking amateurish embarrassment who taps into shrieking hordes that exist in any fan base just for clicks, that's absolutely fine, but that's not what that interview was. Um, and you talk about Andy Mitten being a real deal. I absolutely agree. A proper red who knows the history and culture of the club. I completely agree. I support this football club because my granddad worshipped the Busby Babes and Duncan Edwards. That's my heritage of supporting this football club. I know everything about this football club. And I know it because of my granddad. I'm not from Manchester. So is that, is that, is that what you're talking about? You don't like some of my opinions. Um, that is my response to it. So I'm not, a, I'm not allowed to support Manchester United because I'm not from Manchester and I'm not Andy Mitten, who does a great job with his fanzine and is very well respected. I am not in a battle with Andy Mitten. I don't even know if Andy Mitten put that bit in the in the in the United We Stand magazine. I don't know, but I don't know where this Andy Mitten against Mark Goldbridge thing's happening. Apparently, we're having a charity boxing match as well. I follow Andy Mitten. I respect Andy Mitten. I'm not talking about Andy Mitten. I'm talking about a piece in his fanzine that may or may not been written by him, and I have a right to reply to say it's not true. I accept he's probably been told by a couple of players that they weren't happy with the interview. But if they want the full truth, then they can easily ask and I'll tell them the full truth. You can't kidnap a player and do an interview with them that they don't want to do. And you certainly can't do it at Carrington without it going through a lot of people. And those players knew about it before it came out. So that is my response to it. There is no 
top red versus Goldbridge. There is no mitten versus Goldbridge. There is no argument or beef with that. When I talk about jealousy and why it's come out, I'm talking about the players that have apparently done it because it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, now, if anybody's got any problem with that last half an hour and, see, and thinks that the United Stand is trying to start any beef with anybody or is calling somebody a liar or anything like that, then you know where we are and we can have a chat about it. But I don't, this is what I mean about out of control agenda, out of control story, social media pylons, opportunism. It's, there is no story there, just the truth. Um, I think the club deserve applause for doing something really innovative, even if it only happens once. I think Rasmus or whatever player had done that in interview benefited it from it massively in a very professional way and applause to him as well. And I think that those players that were jealous about it or had a problem with it would benefit from it massively as well. Um, and I think if they think that this community is one that thrives on negativity and um, creating issues for them, then they maybe should take a look in the mirror and realise that if you play well, you get praise. And if you play badly, you get criticised. That's football. Um, and there has never, ever in the time that we've done this together been a situation where one player has had an agenda against them regardless of how they play. I have had a problem with McTominay, Maguire, Lindelof, Fellaini, over the years, I have. But when they've played well, I've given them man of the match. When they score a goal, I've celebrated the goal. There is no agenda. It is about performance. If you perform, certainly in this community anyway, if you perform, you will get praised. If you are bad and consistently bad, you will get criticised. And some people might say, well, you should be sold. You do not, at Manchester United, get a season ticket for life to stay in that first team squad just because you think it's that's right. Sir Alex Ferguson got rid of Beckham. He got rid of Keane. He got rid of Stam. He got rid of, rid of Van Nisseroy. They all won multiple Premier League titles. This team hasn't won a Premier League title. We haven't got a Premier League title winner, I don't think, in this whole squad. And yet some of them just seem to want to settle down and spin these stories. I mean, what have we actually had happen here today? What have we actually had happen to here today? We've apparently got a couple of players who've leaked something out to try and turn all of you lot against this because we called them out for not playing well enough. And we wonder why we fail. I would never, I don't, it doesn't matter, I would never, ever, ever be piling on those players. Um, yeah. Why are people saying Johnny Evans? Uh, Mark, let's go through some of your chats. I'm not exactly local, says Slow Sports News. Woking to Manchester is three hours. I know more Liverpool fans than any other, but I don't care. I'm a red and I uh, through and through. Hi, Mark. Thank you for your content. I feel down sometimes, but you always brighten up my days, says Michael. Look, all I can say about that interview is, do I regret it? I knew it was going to bring a load of shit, uh, but I actually enjoyed it. Um, it's a piece that we did for you. That's why I did it. I wanted, I wanted to run the experiment. It succeeded. I wanted to show the whole world of this social media world or whatever, that what we can do from what we've built can go bigger than any of the established media and can benefit the club in a massive positive way. And we did it. And it may not happen again, but if it did happen again, it would do the same thing. Six million views plus. No one else can do that. And that's because of you. And I also felt, and I may have misread the room, that if we did that interview, it would massively benefit the player because it makes him feel more human to the fans. Um, and it did. Um, and also, I thought it was a really nice treat for all the support that you've given to me and this United Stand team over 10 years, where we've, we've basically built from nothing to this. So I don't regret it. I knew there'd be kickback, but the world's a funny place when effectively you end up with people trying to cancel you because two players who probably aren't very good players are bitter and put something out there and everybody sides with them. And yet people siding with them, I guarantee yesterday were saying they didn't play that well. 
Mark, I'm not exactly... Anyway, let's read some of your comments. Hi, Mark. Should you start selling a United Stand Kool-Aid as the haters act like you're running a cult, says Glenny. But the thing, the, the hilarious thing is, I don't have a problem with any player. I don't have a problem with anybody in the club. I don't have a problem with anybody in the media. And I certainly don't have any problems with any of our fans. I, I, I don't, you know, but all I can do is give you the, the, the truth. And the, the truth is not that an interview was done behind the player's back and then they told him off for it. So if the players don't like you, that's a problem, Mark, because that's a bit, bit uh, tad. No, it isn't, Von. You're not listening. You make it very known when... I, 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 I can't answer that because that's you've just not listened to the whole show. Um... Alawal says your days of delusion are over, even though the players are underperforming, gives you the gives you no right to judge them as a human being. How can you say players get jealous? What's your expertise other than running channel and being a failed cop? Well, I wasn't a failed at anything else like that. But thanks very much for your super chat. And that's a prime example of you can tell the truth for half an hour and somebody just hears air and makes up their own story because I don't even know how you come to that conclusion. Um, you're just a hater. Sunday, isn't it? Maybe the reality of your life is hitting home. I don't know. But if you listen to it and you were a fair minded person, you'd actually realise that we've been misre misrepresented um, and targeted, which is fine. But we have a right to reply. Rasmus interview was fantastic. Nice to hear from him direct. Mainly would be great. Very professional by you, Mark. Hate is going to hate, says Rob. I commend you on your resilience, says Brody. Look, I don't know. Um, should we ban United Legends from being on Sky Sports 2 for calling out the players they want to blame everyone else but themselves, says Yeldon. Keep up the good work, Mark. The interview with Rasmus was top draw. Ignore the hate and never stop working hard and giving everything to every, uh, the channel, says Philip Sutton. I clipped the live so fast because of the title. This is so funny. You played the game, says Black Wolf. If the price of getting interviews is sucking off underperforming, narcissistic, ego-driven prima donnas, I'd gladly not get an interview again. But that's me. The shirt comes first always, says German. And I think this is the comment of the night. And I'm glad you've said that because... You know what? I'd, I'd thought about this this afternoon and I wouldn't have said it in the show. So I really, really appreciate that. At what price are these interviews really? You know, when you actually think about it and we every day is a school day. And I think one thing that I will take criticism on is that. At what price are these interviews? I mean, are they even right to do? You know, you do sit there watching a game and saying... This player shouldn't be at Man United. They've had their chance. They just don't look right. They're not good enough. And then next week you're at Carrington walking past. Oh, how are you doing, mate? You know, they've got every right to be pissed off. Of course they have. And also, does it not dilute what we're doing? So I sort of, I sort of, I, I struggle with that. And I struggled with that even doing the interview. Of course, Rasmus is a player I really like. So it's not uncomfortable in that sense. And there are other players I really like. But if I sat down and did an interview with Scott McTominay, let's say, he'd have every right to say, I don't like you and I don't know what you've said. And I'd have to say back, I don't think you're good enough for Man United either. Let's get on with the interview. So, look, there is there is a very good argument to be said, should you be delving into that world when you're about real opinion? But then I look at it and I go, well, Gary Neville does it. Rio Ferdinand does it. Samuel Lukas does it. Laurie Whitwell does it. You know, they all have an opinion that's not a good opinion on players at some times. I don't know. Mark, don't stress about stupid posts. Uh, as you say, a lot of the time, it's just spin and obviously jealousy. Um, another example of player power in this club. This disease will affect Rasmus and drag him down, says Al. I don't think it will. I don't think it will because um, I don't speak for Rasmus or anybody else. But that's that's the part of the story I, don't ha I have an issue with, is that players have gone to Rasmus and told him that he basically shouldn't have done it. And he's apologised and said he didn't know. That 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 literally didn't happen. Um, I I think we've got some players coming through in that club, like Ganacho, Rasmus, Mainu, who, if players tell them not to do something, I think they'll say, well, you're not telling me not to do it. A lot of the younger players are social media savvy. A lot of the younger players will have grown up on maybe the United Stand, maybe FIFA career modes, you know, a lot of the younger players will know who Angry Ginge is, for example. A lot of the younger players will know who the Sidemen are. A lot of younger players will have grown up with you, potentially, because we've been going for eight or nine years. You take eight or nine years off a 25-year-old, they're 16, 17. You take it off somebody who's like 21, they're 12 or 13. They're probably watching. And that's what people don't realise. These older players probably just aren't really into it or, or don't know what it's all about and they're telling these younger players don't do this don't do that 
but they know what this is. They've grown up with it. They probably quite like it. So you're up against that as well. Mark, you should do interviews with as many players as you can just to stick it up to everyone else as Dejan. Look, I, I won't duck doing an interview with any player, you know. I've, you know, if Harry Maguire wants one, let's do it. I think it'd be great. Funny how these granddads came out of nowhere to get likes and attention through the same thing. They're criticising you. Love the Rasmus interviews as Mario Franco. Look, I have no issue with those people. You know, I've had people messaging me today saying you can't go to Old Trafford because you'll get beat up. Well, let's see about that. I'd love to see somebody do that because Seb wants to go and watch Man United and he's only six. So when I take Seb to Manchester United, if there's going to be a pile on from a load of hardcore Reds, you're going to be beating the shit out of me and doing God knows what in front of a six-year-old. Well done. And, and why? Why? Because a couple of multimillionaire players may or may not have said that they weren't happy with an interview. Or because you've seen a few people on Twitter say that this is a toxic, negative um, outlet, which it's not, that actually doesn't want the Glazers running the club, that backs most players and certainly backs the manager. If that's, if that's the world, if that's where you're coming from, if that's what gets you angry... I'll tell you for free, you're getting angry about the wrong thing. But if you want to go and do that and be that person, escalate it to that level if you want. I don't understand it. I don't I don't understand it. But, you know, um, I was meant to be going next week, actually. Sheffield United was going to be Seb's first game because I thought Sheffield United is shit. They can run the watch along from the studio. I can be on it until that 10 minutes before the kickoff. Take him down to the game. We'll definitely win. Um, but obviously it's Liverpool now, so we, we, we had to cancel it. But uh, that is going to happen. So maybe check Sheffield United next game and you can all queue up there. I'll tell you where I'm going to be. I'll stand there with my six-year-old son and you can bring your weapons or whatever you're going to do and do whatever you think this is to me. Do it. I can't stop that. But I'm telling you now, you're wrong. Whatever you think, you're wrong. It's not what you think it is, and it never has been. Ash, welcome to the Members Club. Uh, Sabatashi, welcome to the Members Club. Ash has been here for 17 months. Um, thanks, Graham. I hope there are more interviews. Keep doing what you're doing, says Sean. Uh, Sean, thank you very much. Uh, will you do more interviews? I don't know. Uh, Al has come in with another one. Just not going to read this out. Um, oh, no, I will read it because... This is, this, is, this is what we're up against. Um, your content is built around negativity, slandering players and false news. You complain when this happens to you. Even now you're dividing the club. Shut your channel down. Yeah, so we do a new show every morning. How can that be false news? Because it comes in from other journalists. Um, we had the exclusive on a couple of transfers in the summer. We had an exclusive this morning about another transfer. We were ahead of everybody else about uh, the Alexis Sanchez deal. Um, it's not fake news, mate, is it? And negativity, I've been fighting for this manager and certain players for the last three or four months. And most of you hate me for it. So I could easily be negative and you'd probably all love me for it. Um, all I'm saying is if players are worried about any social media group before performing on the pitch, then we have bigger issues, says John. Um, the Hughes lad says, this toxicity makes me want to support you, not support United anymore. I hate it. Um, apparently this community is worse for United than any underperforming player, the Glazers and Liverpool. Um, Ambi says you're a troll and create a horribly toxic culture. The same culture you complain about. I'm not complaining about it. I'm not complaining about it. I've just read your comment. I read Kieran Maguire's comment. I've told you all the other comments. Everyone's got a right to say what they want to do, but we've got a right to reply and tell you the truth. And then you can go and believe your, your falsity or you can believe the truth. It's up to you. Um, toxic culture. I don't, I, I've never understood what this toxic culture is. I, I really don't know. All I can say is you don't watch the channel. How can it be a toxic culture to discuss the future of the football club and want the Glazers out? How can it be a toxic culture to not want a manager to be sacked? How can it be a toxic culture to discuss each individual player and the ups and downs of whether we should sell them or not? How can, how can it be toxic culture to mark a player in a very fair system out of 10 after every game where six is average and every one of you get to vote on it and I have my say and it compares to yours? And most of the time, we're ridiculously close. Um, NC44 says, United got a lot of coverage from the United stand uh, than they would any other platform. Reports a dangerous spin. There would be more defending than attacking you says NC44. Uh, continue to make the football-related content. Um, uh, thank you very much. Some people want attention by putting out quality and some seek attention by sabotaging others who are successful, says Kia. Um, these players just hate their own narrative being pushed in an independent channel is actually telling the truth. You should never apologise for keeping it real, says Bilal. Um, 
I love United and feel a daily connection through the United stand, says Karen. And thank you very much, Daniel Sturridge, as well. Look, it's... I'd rather be talking about Greenwood um, leaving United because that's what Fabrizio's put out. But we've got Fabrizio on the show tomorrow as well. Yeah, toxic fake news. Fabrizio's on the show tomorrow, as he's been on for many years. Um, we have Paul Ince on the show. Ben Foster on the show. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I'm falling into the trap there um, and allowing people to, you know, potentially rattle me or cook me or whatever it is. But... Um, yeah, well, we can ask Fabrizio about that tomorrow night. I'd rather be talking about that. Do you think it's spin from the Glazers or Ineos? I would, I would hope that the the Ineos are not interested in that type of thing. I mean, it would be a compliment, I suppose, but uh, they don't need to fear the United stand. Trust me. Uh, Mark, you've done so much for so many fans and non-fans alike. Uh, for everyone, hater, many of us will stand by you and our stand. Long may this continue to grow. Says PK. A lot of respect for you, Mark. The fact that you're willing to even speak on it and respond to these people, keep pushing them. Well, look, 100% I should respond to it because it's about a United player. It's about other United players. And to be honest with you, we didn't put it out there. Everybody else did. Every United aggregator put it out there because they probably thought, oh, it's a chance to bury the United stand. Even though what we did may have opened them the door to do stuff like that in the future. So, they, you know, they're, they're biting the hand that feeds them in a sense because United opened the door to us and the hope would be that they would open the door to others and be re really innovative. Because I personally would rather see United fan content and what Andy Mitten has done. I would rather read that, whether it's an interview with Ten Hag or a player, than the press pack in a press conference who are just a load of journalists employed by massive news corporations who don't support Manchester United. So I actually find it funny and ironic that these aggregator accounts who, who made this story big, I mean, the, the fanzine, how many people read the fanzine? More of you should, but it blew up because people took it from there and put it all over social media. So I have to react to it because it's hypocritical if you don't, because we do a news show every morning. And that was big news today. Um, but the big story for me, if it was true, would be that you've got two United players telling Rasmus Hoyland he can't do interviews with fan content. And that should never happen. And again, that's... If we're winning and we're top of the league and every one of these players are doing well, I still think it's wrong. But I think it's really wrong that you know, more spin, PR, whatever you want to call it. And we're not, they're not doing well on the pitch. Um, Mr. Darkseed says, it's nothing personal. If a player plays well, there will be praise. If the player plays badly, there will be criticism, just like any other job. Yeah, and look, I, I think that, I think some people can deal, I mean, I actually, I, this is the great thing. If you've not seen the interview with Rasmus, I actually asked him that question, didn't I? I mean, this is how good that interview was. I actually, it just came into me now. I actually asked him that question and the club allowed it to be asked asked as well. Um, I asked him how he deals with social media. And you can go back and listen to it if I get this wrong. But as I recall it, he said, look, I'm on social media. I've grown up on social media. But what I've really noticed is that, you know, there's good stuff, but there's bad stuff. And I just don't take any notice of it. And that's exactly how a modern footballer should be, because hate everyone has haters um everybody everybody does no matter how good somebody is everybody have a hater and if you read that hater that's going to bring you down so but i think we do have players unfortunately who really let it bother them they really let it bother them um and that's a shame because you're never going to win that battle you're never going to win that battle i mean i I, I've been, for example, look, I just, I really want Rashford to get back to what he was last year. Um, I, you know, I, I actually like the player. I don't think he's playing very well this season. I don't think he looks very happy. I fell out with most of you about the Belfast thing because I didn't believe he'd been out on the Thursday night. You were right, he had. Um, and then on the Monday, I said, I sort of agreed that he should play against Wolves and most of you didn't. Um, I've seen some of his Instagram posts and the replies are horrific. That's not the United stand, by the way. That's just social media. Um, the United stand's not social media. 
Um, you know, Andy Mitten's not social media. The so social media is is, is enormous. Um, and players should not take any notice of it. They should look in the mirror and, and take notice of what they're doing because that's what elite sports mentality is all about. I think, unfortunately, we do have players that really do sort of like go, you can't do that. You shouldn't be doing that. I, I look at that, you know, that's not how it's going to work. But look, if you want to take one thing away, if there was ever any in truth in the fact that a couple of United players are telling a United player they can't do something, because they don't like that. I'll tell you an exclusive. There's people in that dressing room who don't like each other. There's people in the dressing room at Arsenal that don't like each other. And Chelsea. I don't know that for a fact, actually. But there are people in dressing rooms who don't like each other. Like Andy Cole and Teddy Sheringham didn't like each other in a treble winning team. It happens all the time. These dressing rooms are ring a ring of roses and the sacred circle of trust don't exist even Eric Ten Hag spoke about it on Friday it's hard to build a team unity in the modern game because so many players are surrounded by agents and other people and just flit in and out um, Mark I'm 54 and I've been a red since 77 it's my first season that I've been watching the show and I'm really enjoying it says Lincoln Red thank you very much mate um, the players haven't played well for over a decade they have no right to complain play well and you will be praised it's that simple says Nigel Mate, you know what? The best nights, the best shows I've ever done was the... My best, sh my favourite show ever is the Europa League win with Mourinho against Ajax. I love that night. It's not my best night ever as a United fan, but as a community, that was the best night ever. I crave what Man City are doing, what Liverpool are doing, what Arsenal are potentially doing. I crave that. I'd love to be in a position where we're going... Oh, Ten Hag's the guy. Rashford's up for the Ballon d'Or. Bruno's the best number 10 in the world. You know, I, I love all that. They don't realise that that's what drives the criticism is that we want that. It's not, it is not personal. It's not like, oh, I don't like you. I don't like you. I don't like the way you run. It, it, it's, 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 it's that. That's what we want. And if this had been around in 99, it just would have been an absolute fairy tale for, for nine months. There'd have been no negativity. None. I'm tired of he hearing certain players from the dressing room. These journalists need to name these cowardly crap millionaires, says Cupid. Well, I'd love to know who those players were, but I will acknowledge that there will be a few players that don't like the United stand. There'll be a lot that do. Um, that's life, isn't it? You know, uh, And I would imagine the people that don't like it are the people that have had a bit of criticism. People hate you when you support or critique, says Shane. Um, thank you very much. Uh, this players uh, haven't played. Okay, if you don't have haters, you're doing something wrong, says Sumi. Um, NC44 says, Rasmus and his team near you and the United Stand, so did the club. They didn't care about the opinions of a few underperforming players and neither should we. That's pretty much nailed it on the head, to be honest. Um, you get tens of thousands of live viewers every match because people like you and your content. Keep up the good work. Don't listen to the loud minority, says Coney. Uh, how's your mental health today, says Infinite Paradox. Hope you're doing okay. You're the only person who's ever asked me that today. Um, um, yeah, look, it's fine. Because as the haters would say, you know, they've got every right to say what they want to say. They've got every right to say what they want to say. They've got every right not to like what we do. That is fine. But we've got every right to reply to it. That's where it is. Um... It's a fantastic community. Um, I'm very, very proud of what we've built. And, you know, it's it, uh, there will be a time when we stop doing it. Um, but there was something else I was going to say. There, there will be a time when we stop doing it. But I'll tell you what, if we stop it tomorrow, there's six or seven others that will just step in and take our place. They might not be as big, but they'll step in and take our place. And they might not run themselves in the way that we do. We've got good people working for us who verify information, who speak to people about it, who make things make sure things are done properly. We've made a couple of mistakes, but we very rarely make a mistake where somebody contacts us and goes, where did you get that inf information from? Um, so look, better the devil you know sometimes, because if we stop, I know for a fact a lot of others don't run in the same way and you will just get fed pure opinion and not verified information sometimes. 
which is not taking anything away that they're doing. There's one or two who do it really, really well, to be fair. Um, what I'm saying is you can shut, you can cancel and shut down the United stand, but there's loads of others out there that will just still be there. Um, thanks for that, though, Infinite Paradox. Um, uh, ben White as well. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, and, and, and look, also, I'm just very wary of some of the people who are piling on because it's in their interest to pile on. Um, and as I said, the mainstream have been doing this for years and they're not even United fans. I mean, what article have we put out that's, you know, trying to get a manager sacked? What article have we put out, you know, about players partying or turning up late for training, etc.? I don't think we've ever done that. I don't think we've ever done anything personal like that. So, and yet those people walk into a press conference every week. Oh, that's fine though, because they're not United fans. Come back to Ireland, bro, says Chris. Uh, hey, and I just want to finish on that as well. You know, this isn't fake. We've done loads of live shows. I've met loads of you. Like, this is a real community. And, um, yeah, you know, it's not just some propaganda bullshit. It's real. It is real. Um, I'm very proud of it. And I actually think that what, ha what tends to happen is things get clipped up and put out there by people who grab 30 seconds because they're jealous or whatever. I don't know. But actually, within the show, because I bloody well feel it, with you 10 hog outers or, or you want to sell Bruno or whatever, I feel, I feel the conflict. I feel the conversation. One thing I, I can never, ever, and will always argue is, over the years we've been doing this, God, I remember some of the shows, the arguments the stubbornness, whatever you want to call it. I don't think we've ever had a show where we don't cover both sides or four or five sides. It, 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 it definitely isn't a one-way street. And you definitely don't let me get away with that. Um, I remember from the early shows, which were on a Sunday night with Kev and Martin and Rich and Alex, um, the, the, the tagline was always um, real fan opinion for real fans, um, which seems a bit out of place now. But... One of the things I always used to say was, you're not meant to agree. It's good when you don't agree. Because if you don't agree, you get thinking. Then you get passionate. Then you have an opinion. And that's the most important thing. This is not about being a voice for the fans. I detest that. This is not about having a unified, you know, cult about anything. The best thing is, is when you don't agree. That doesn't mean don't agree with me on anything. But what I mean is like... It's best when you don't agree because then you form an opinion and you get passionate about it. And and that every show, sometimes I'm exhausted. Sometimes I'm excited. Sometimes I'm angry. You know, the Fulham game. No, the Man City game. I was embarrassed last week because I was going around doing the stuff I do. And people were going, oh, you got really angry last week. And I used the C word twice. I hate that word. And that's because I'd lost it. I was getting very angry. I was rattled. Man City... Ten Hag out has rattled me. But that's the greatness of it. That's the brilliance of it. I've had loads of shows where I've been rattled and pissed off because I've lost the argument. I can see the chat and I've lost the argument. You know, I'm probably losing the Ten Hag argument, but I'm not going to change my opinion on it because we do cover every little thing. Um, but look, thanks for your time tonight. I hope some of you have enjoyed it. Um, you know, maybe I, I just wanted to add some clarity to it. Because there's some weird stuff on social media about this Andy Mitten versus Goldbridge thing. I've not said anything about Andy Mitten. It's in his fanzine. I don't even know if he writ wrote it. But when I'm talking about jealousy and stuff, I'm talking about the players. You know, maybe the... And that's, that's speculation. But I don't understand why they would have a problem with something they knew that was going to happen. Maybe it's the jealousy afterwards because it's taken a few weeks for it to come out. I don't know. I don't know. But on the other hand, I don't definitely know who the players are. But I, you know our side took months to sort that interview out everybody in the club was, knew about it the player knew about it they knew what the united stand was they knew about the questions they had the interview for a week before it was allowed to go out it was done properly there's no way we could get hold of any player get an interview put it out and then no one knows about it and goes what's going on that's just not the way it works it can't happen um anyway tomorrow we've got fabrizio on the show uh, who has apparently put something out about Mason Greenwood. Um, and um, yeah, looking forward to it. Paolo, let me just catch up on these. Uh, Paolo says, 
Uh, are, re are fans really defending the same players who keep downing tools and leaking inf information just to benefit themselves? Yeah. That's, that's basically the big thing today that I can't get my head around. Even if what was said was true, some of our fan base would rather turn on all of us to back players they don't know who they are for telling a player not to do an interview with us. And those players are probably underperforming. It's a weird world, isn't it? I mean, I think literally it's almost like, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't get that mentality really, but there we go. Thanks everyone for watching. You're absolute legends. Take care. I hope that's been relatively interesting, but look, even if it's not, I'm not going to let social media run some sort of strange Andy Mitten versus Goldbridge bullshit. And I'm certainly not going to let it um, run some false story that, you know, isn't true and can easily be, you know, evidenced. Um, take care. Stay safe. Speak to you in a bit.